Hey, what's going on everyone? Uh, in this video, I'm excited to walk you through the very basics of a tool called Teammate. Um, it is a Tmux based tool uh, for pairing up with teammates. It's a way of sharing your terminal locally on your local machine uh, with a friend, with a coworker, that kind of thing, kind of regardless of where they are, whether they're in the same office on the same network or across the globe somewhere. Um, I'm gonna show you two main ways of using it. Uh, the first is gonna be the quick and dirty way, like just get a shell shared. And the second way is gonna be a more secure way um, using SSH uh, keys and, and the authorized keys file. Um, so if you are totally new to Tmux, you may just wanna brush up after this video on the uh, Tmux video that I, kind of Tmux basics or walkthrough video that I created uh, a few years back. Um, and uh, without further ado, let's jump in. Let me show you the tool. The idea is you start a teammate session on wherever you are. Um, that kind of calls out to a server, creates a session, and a kind of with a kind of random um, username. That's essentially your password. Um, you then share that with your friend or coworker. Send that to them, you know, in a chat situation, and then uh, they connect to there, and that actually gets them a connected to that same Tmux session uh, locally. Um, the cool thing about this is that because both sides are calling in as clients and uh, the teammate servers are um, the only kind of static thing, this works through firewalls, this works through, um, you know, if there's like IP changes, if you're moving around and you're getting handed off on different networks, um, it, it circumvents a lot of the weird, like having to run a server and punch a bunch of holes through uh, networking problems that you could run into. So um, the installation is really easy. Uh, Mac OS, brew install teammate, Ubuntu apt install teammate. Uh, everybody else probably knows what they're doing. So uh, I'll just go jump right into the demo. So the simplest way of running this, and there's two ways. So just like hang tight for two seconds because I'm gonna show you the simple way and then I'm gonna show you the secure way that actually includes an extra layer of authentication uh, beyond just, this is what I mean by password. So this is really how you don't just get found by every hacker, right? It's like a, a randomly, hopefully random, <laughs> pseudo randomly generated string that's new for each session, uh, which is, this is where your security is. This is why no, no one, like not everyone finds you immediately. But that's only one layer of security, so you want to use authorized keys generally too. I'm just going to show you how this works, and then I'll show you how to use authorized keys for this. So, I have now started this Tmux session. So if I break open another shell, and now just pretend that the shell on the right is remote, and the uh, shell on the left is local. Of course, they're both local. They're just different panes in i3. Um, but if I then type that in... I have now connected with that SSH command, and this is a session, so on the right side, this is punching through uh, the teammate servers down into this Tmux session that's local here on the left, um, and they're both connected to the same uh, Tmux session, and if you've ever used Tmux before, um, I like leaving this, uh, this I don't like, like control Cing out of this, just in case I want to invite more people, so I control B, C to create a new, uh, damn it, I forget what they're called. Watch my Tmux session. I need to watch my Tmux video to remember what these are called, panes, workspaces? I don't know. Um, but now, both of these people uh, can see the same text, and that is um, cool, because like obviously you're, <laughs> you know, um, you're really doing something like uh, editing a file, right? So like, you can now write some code together. Um, and even though you have different keyboards, um, this is a great way to pair, right? And when you're pairing, usually one person's thinking and the other person's writing, um, you kind of switch off. So it's not like the, um, the, the popular TV, like two hackers, like typing on the same keyboard so they can hack faster type of thing. It's like one person's thinking and talking, the other person's talking and writing. Uh, so that would be kind of the workflow. And it's amazing, right? I mean, like with essentially nothing. I mean, one person has to, the host essentially has to install a uh, teammate, but that is an extremely um, quick and easy way to uh, to do this. So if this person disconnects, obviously they're disconnected, but the session exists still. Um, if I uh, close down all the sessions from the host side, um, that will obviously kick everyone who's watching off. 
I just want to give a quick thank you to interviewing.io for sponsoring this video. You might pick this up from my videos and especially my interviews with friends, but the top tier tech companies are paying honestly insane salaries for software engineers right now. The problem is that their interviews are often difficult and even great developers can fail because they don't know what to expect or how they should prepare. At interviewing.io, you can practice realistic coding interviews with senior engineers from those top tier companies that you're trying to get into. They'll not only give you mock interviews that train you for the real thing, but you'll also get detailed feedback on exactly what you need to work on to improve your chances. They've got the largest network of vetted and experienced tech interviewers in the world, so you can book an interview with as little as 24 hours notice. And here's the crazy part, which is why I'm talking about it here. You don't have to pay until you're hired. Yeah, so they're not just making money by selling you a dream. The only way they get paid is if you get paid. So if you want to get hired at top tech companies like Google, Facebook, and Amazon, click the link in the description below and have a look. There's a ton of recorded interviews for you to stream, so you can see how it works right now. If you didn't notice, there's a couple really cool features with this. Uh, namely, you, you'll see it here. You have a different session types. So like if you want to just show somebody something, but you don't want them like able to quickly, I don't know, you know, cat uh, Etsy shadow or whatever, <laughs> like you can do a read only session if you don't trust somebody super well on, on the keyboard. Um, there's also a web session where someone can actually see, uh, gets essentially a, a virtual terminal in the cloud. Uh, no, you know, in their browser. Uh, so it's just like a single page app that refreshes. So now let's talk about um, maybe a just slightly more locked down version of this. This is what I would actually recommend doing. It's just one extra layer now that you know how, uh, how the kind of workflow works with Teammate. And that is, um, you add your friends, um, I don't know, a key, uh, one of their SSH keys to an authorized keys files. Now it can be your normal authorized keys file or a specialized authorized keys file that you like just make for teammate. And then you call teammate with dash A, I believe it's for authentication. And then you use this authorized keys file as your uh, authorized keys files. In fact, this is probably authorized keys, not authentication. I'm just, you know, it's what I do, I guess at things. So it's a cool idea to use a custom authorized keys file just for teammate because like those are not people you really want in a system necessarily, like if you have authorized keys. Um, so having a separate one is cool. And you can also just do all of this in your teammate conf file, which mirrors the format of um, of a regular T Tmux configuration file. So uh, that is cool. And now I will show you what that workflow looks like. So um, for those that don't know, I did not know this until last week. I don't know how. Uh, my friend showed me that you can, uh, thanks Paul. I actually interviewed Paul. So if you want to see that interview, um, check it out. He's really smart. Paul is a kind of like DevOps person and web dev and all kinds of stuff. If you curl this endpoint, so github.com slash somebody's github username dot keys, it'll show you their public keys. So for me, you get like a bunch of public keys. And that's a nice, neat listing of um, keys that, like, if you quickly need to, like, let me SSH into a box, like, one of these is a good bet. Uh, I'm actually not sure which these are, but, you know, some of these are a good bet. Anyway, most people will only have one. So I just slapped together this quick command, curl silent, so you don't get the weird transfer whatever bytes notice at the top. Pipe that into, we just want the first line, and then append <laughs> two, not one of these, otherwise you're overwriting. Um, into just my authorized keys file right now. So I've run this command and now I can just tell teammate like, yeah, please use like SSH authentication, public key authentication, but, uh, and only authorize the keys that are, that are listed in here. Whew. So teammate A, SSH authorized keys, same exact deal. Now you share, you know, this, whoopsie, with your friend whatever let's just see yeah I did copy that now I'm being prompted for my key and so that is pretty sweet so as you can see not not just anyone can log in now right there's like an actual barrier to someone just like logging in and watching the session or like being able to mess with things or quickly run a script that they've copied into the buffer um, to like extract a bunch of data while they record the screen I don't know I can think of a few ways to abuse this if you don't lock this down so Again, this is protecting you, right? Like this is randomly generated, pseudo randomly, randomly generated, hopefully, 
this is a design to be hard to guess and long enough that you could probably run a pretty long session without someone being able to just like come across this. But like SSH keys are a thing, so it's easier to just turn this on and use that feature. So that is Teammate. I think it's an incredible tool. If I had known about it earlier, I would have been using it a lot more. Um, I've done a lot of weird stuff with like, oh, I guess we'll like push my local like development stuff into a quick like digital ocean, like $5 a month box and then running a Tmux session on it and then adding someone to authorized keys and actually letting them straight like get a login shell on the box and then sharing with them, but without all my cool locally installed stuff. Well, this is way, way better, way faster, way easier, way simpler and uh, way more useful. So I hope that's been useful. Uh, remember to like, subscribe if this kind of stuff is useful. And thank you again to interviewing.io for sponsoring this video and making it possible for me to make these. Appreciate it. Check them out. They're in the description. All right. Peace and love.